The third icon of evolution that I wrote about is homology in vertebrate limbs. If you look at the bones in the human hand, the way they're constructed and put together, their, their structure and positions, and you compare that to a bat's wing or a porpoise's flipper uh, or any number of other vertebrates, the structure and position of the bones are actually strikingly similar. You can sort of match them up one for one. And uh, this was recognized before Darwin by pre-Darwinian biologists and called homology. It's different from another sort of similarity called analogy, which is that, say, between a bat's wing and a butterfly's wing. Although they're both wings and they're both used for flying, the internal structure of the bat swing is quite different from that of a butterfly, radically different. And so analogy was not used to classify organisms, whereas homology was. When Darwin came along, he attributed homology to descent from a common ancestor, so common ancestry rather than common design. And this was at the core of his theory. He considered homology some of the best evidence for his theory, these sort of similarities in structure and position. And in fact, that's how paleontologists arrange fossils, depending on their anatomical similarities and differences. Even for the molecular comparisons, we're still talking about homology in the sense that we're comparing similarities and differences of, in this case, DNA sequences or protein sequences. So homology is at the heart of the evidence for Darwinian theory that is, descent with modification from a common ancestor. One problem with the reliance on homology as evidence for Darwin's theory is that we have some things that appear to be homologous, but which we know or we believe do not come from a common ancestor. For example, the human eye and the eye of an octopus are actually quite similar, and yet nobody believes that the common ancestor of humans and octopuses had an eye like that. So there are cases, there's actually many cases in the biological world, of structures that appear to be homologous, but which do not come from a common ancestor. Well, Darwin's followers sort of finesse the problem by redefining homology as similarity due to a common ancestor. So instead of similarity of structure and position, homology was now similarity due to common ancestry. The problem with that move is that if you define homology in, term, in terms of common ancestry, you cannot then turn around and say that it's evidence for common ancestry, because that's circular reasoning. In effect, you're saying homology is due to common ancestry, which is due to common ancestry. So logically speaking, once you define homology in terms of common ancestry, you cannot use it as evidence for common ancestry. Although I wrote icons 10 years ago, uh, it took many biologists a long time to realize this, but recently Richard Dawkins, an outspoken defender of Darwinism, in his book The Greatest Show on Earth, recognized this problem that you cannot use a word that's defined in terms of common ancestry as evidence for common ancestry. So Dawkins' solution is to use another word, homeomorphic. So we don't talk about homology now, we talk about homeomorphism. Well, it's a nice try, but it doesn't really solve the problem. The problem is still, how do you use similarities and differences to show common ancestry as opposed to common design? As I pointed out in Icons of Evolution, the problem of using homology to infer common ancestry was illustrated by, unwittingly in this case, by Ohio State biologist Tim Barrett in a book he wrote to defend Darwinism against its critics. And what Barrett did was he used a series of pictures of Corvette automobiles, 54 model I think it was, 55 and so on. And he argued that by comparing the similarities in these automobiles, it's possible to know without, beyond a reasonable doubt, that this is descent with modification. The problem with that is that everybody knows Corvette automobiles were designed by engineers. They were not products of biological descent with modification. So what Berra unwittingly proved with his drawing is that 
A mere succession of similarities is not evidence for common ancestry. It could be evidence for common design. So what I wrote about homology 10 years ago on Icons of Evolution is still true. You can compare similarities and differences, anatomical, molecular, whatever. You cannot distinguish between common ancestry and common design without a mechanism. And the more we know about homology, the clearer it is that we do not have a mechanism to explain it. And so the problem that I posed in 2000 is still with us.